Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video here on the channel. Today we're back with chapters. This is 30 Days Stranded episode 6. And today things look like they might be a bit emotional because... This part is called Rose Coloured Glasses. You have painful flashbacks of your history with Connor before a mud pit challenge. Can you find the strength within yourself to forgive? Well, we're gonna find out. Let's go. Noelle, before you go, you deserve some answers. We left off here with Connor trying to get our attention, so let's see what he has to say. You turn around in surprise. Connor's standing right behind you. I need to talk to you, alone. Connor takes your hands in his. You glance over at the producers. Jeff, Scott and the producers are waiting impatiently by the car to take you to your private dinner. What is it? Look, I don't want to hold you up, but when you get back from your reward tonight, we should talk. Connor, okay, sure, we can do that. Connor sighs with relief. Before you can say anything more, the producers wave you over. Come on, Noelle, time to go. You tug your hand out of Connor's grip. Later, okay? You nod. Your mind is racing as you walk to the car. Maybe we'll find out what happened between us all those years ago. Ooh, look at the car. You join Scott inside the car's cool leather interior. Finally, some alone time. I can think of a hundred ways I'd like to take advantage of our privacy. You raise an eyebrow, looking pointedly at Ben and Anna, who are buried under camera equipment. Ben and Anna, want to chime in here? Oh, we're invisible. Yeah, don't mind us. And we're not going to get changed before we get there? Sorry, 30 days rule. Scott turns to you, sensing your discomfort. So that's how you're going to be tonight? You're not even going to try and get to know me, Noel? I'd rather ride in silence. I'll be civil if you are. Though I highly doubt you're capable of civility. Scott narrows his eyes. I can do better than civil. I'll show you. Together you arrive at dinner. It's actually quite beautiful. Scott extends a hand to help you get out of the car. I should take his hand. I don't know why. I don't know why. I've decided to do that. You take Scott's hand and allow him to guide you out of the car. Thanks. See, Noel, I can be a gentleman. You know, Scott, it does ruin the effect a little when you say out loud that you're a gentleman. You sit down together at the restaurant. The waiter brings out the first course of soup and salad. You immediately dive in. You're starving after the challenge. Scott can't help but laugh. <laughs> Hungry much? On you. Dig in. I wanted to be polite and let you go first. Screw polite. The challenge burned off any dinner etiquette I may have had. Scott laughs. It's almost peaceful, eating and drinking without the usual noise of the rest of the house. I like this more stripped down version of you, Noel. You raise an eyebrow at him. Meaning what exactly? I thought you'd be way more of a stuck up person. You can feel his foot brush against yours beneath the table. Are you seriously trying to play footsie with me right now? He grins at you across the table and reaches for your hand. Come on, Noel, you don't have to play coy with me anymore. We're alone now, you don't have to pretend. You draw your hand away. I'm officially enacting a no talking rule. Starting right now, okay? Cool? Cool. You take a huge bite of your food, intent on ignoring Scott for the rest of the meal. Scott gives you another one of his smarmy grins, undeterred by your rejection. Like I said before, Noel, you might want to consider being a little nicer to me. You narrow your eyes around him. And why is that? I've been around the reality show scene for a while. I know some things. I should... I want to investigate further. I do want to see what he knows. What the hell are you talking about? Scott leans forward. I know about your and Connor's relationship history, including the harsh breakup. A stone of dread sinks in your stomach. You try and keep your face aloof, but Scott clearly notices. Is that meant to scare me? It's not exactly a secret. Everyone knows where X is. I know why he never had the decency to tell you why he left. You can feel the moment your stoic expression collapses into a look of horror. You close your eyes, drawn helplessly into your own memories. Ooh, a flashback! The dreaded night returns to you. The image is sharp as though you were watching through film. Connor Cobalt, you clever, clever boy. You're eagerly walking Walnut Street around Penn Campus, searching for the final clue to your scavenger hunt. Connor's truly outdone himself for our first anniversary. As you turn the corner, you find the Penn travel mug you've always considered your lucky charm. And there it is. You grin to yourself as you pick up the mug. Inside it, there's a tiny note. Go back to the beginning, I'll be waiting for you there. All of our arguments and competing, Let's see how long your luck will fare. A light bulb clicks for you. He means Lucky's Diner, that little hole in the wall restaurant he took me to on our first date. He took me there as a joke, assuming I'd want something fancier, but I loved it. That's so thoughtful. I love how much thought he puts into everything. Now that you've unlocked the final clue, you race over to the diner and throw open the doors. Connor, where are you? You walk into the diner and call out his name. 
but the diner is almost entirely empty. You grin to yourself, thinking he's playing a joke. Connor, all right, enough's enough. I'm starving. He isn't there. You pull out the note again, thinking maybe you've misinterpreted the clue. No, I, I know this is the place. I'm going to call him. I think that's what I would do. I just call straight away. You open your phone to dial Connor's number. You wait anxiously as it rings and rings. It finally sends you to voicemail. Hey, Connor, it's me. Where are you? Come soon, okay? Love you. After 20 minutes, you still haven't heard anything. Then 30 minutes, then an hour. By now, you've left him a dozen voicemails and texts. It's our first anniversary. He planned all these scavenger hunt clues and now he's just gone. He doesn't call the next day or the next or the next. What the hell? Did I get the clue wrong? He doesn't call the next day or the next or the next. So he just disappeared. You're at an extravagant Christmas party at university president's house with your sisters. Here, drink this. You look like you need it. You accept the drink Lily offers you and down it in almost one gulp. What if he's here? After abandoning you in the most cowardly way on your anniversary? We don't know what happened. What if he got into an accident? I don't think he got into an accident. Your eyes hook on the man who's just entered the party. You know that face, those eyes, that swagger. Lily speaks before you can. No way. It's Connor in his best suit. Hanging off his arm is Caroline Haverford. Your jaw drops. You can feel your entire body begin to shake with rage and hurt and confusion. I should confront him. I think this is what Noelle would have done. She would have confronted him, which is probably how she ended up on the show. You storm over to Connor and Caroline. I can't believe you had the audacity to show up here. Connor turns around to face you, stunned. Noelle, at the sound of his voice, you feel yourself begin to quiver with anger. You run, unable to stand being in the same room with Connor a minute longer. A hand catches your wrist. You know without needing to look that it's Connor. Noelle, wait, please, wait. Your, uh, your voice trembles with hurt and anger. Wait, after you made me wait on our anniversary? After you've made me wait by the phone? Are you kidding me? I thought you were missing. I thought you were dead. I filed a police report. Please, I can explain everything. I just, I can't hear. But if, if we go somewhere private. No, Connor, I'm not going to be your other woman. God only knows how long this has been going on. No, that's not it. At that moment, you can see Caroline approaching Connor from behind. Babe, what's going on? Babe, something snaps inside you at the sound of Caroline's voice. I should, I can't throw my drink on them, right? Because then it, it should have been more of an obvious callback when she spilt the wine on us like two episodes ago. So I'm just gonna, oh, I want the drama. I'm gonna call them out. You know what? You two are perfect for each other. You're both spoiled brats. You practically spit the words. Caroline's face twists in anger. Connor just looks stunned. You don't understand. Save it. Enjoy the rest of your lives. You spin around, desperate to leave the party and wash your hands of the entire situation. Time to get out of here. You race towards the front doors. As you leave, you see a familiar silhouette on the way out. You drag your hand across your eyes, wiping away the tears. It's Connor's mum. Oh, I should have known she'd be here since she's on the board of trustees at the university. And she's wearing what's clearly a conniving grin on her face as she looks right at you. What the heck? Oh, oh, oh. So I definitely feel like maybe Connor's mum put Connor and Caroline up to it. Like, did we need a distraction from something that was going on? Did she not want Connor to be affiliated with us and Lily, who made the adult film that got publicized? Or I don't know. That's really interesting though. I really want to find out what's going to happen. And we have had to get back into the restaurant with Scott. So let's find out what Scott's got to say. The gentle clatter of a spoon rips you from your memories. You blink and Scott's face comes into view. Your heart is still racing from your trip down memory lane. Scott raises his eyebrow. He left you in the middle of your anniversary. It wasn't cute. Scott, it wasn't cute. Actually, you nod in agreement. Honestly, I feel for you, Noelle. I bet you deleted his number and blocked him after that Christmas party. You destroy the letters he sent you without reading them. You wouldn't even go to debate practice. Once he even reached out to Lily and Daisy to pass a message along and they told him absolutely not. Should I have listened? I was so hurt the only way I could think to protect myself was to cut him off. You can't help but think of that smirk on his mum more. You feel a little spike of doubt. I see you and I see your pain. Connor's an awful person. Admit it, Noelle. It's then you remember the cameras. They swing closer to you, eager for that clip of you talking badly about Connor. Scott's eyes light up in that moment. Connor's pleading expression swims in your mind. 
his touch, his kind words, the sincerity in his eyes. Connor is still a real mystery to me going down the middle. I don't get why he did what he did, but I know he has layers to him. Yeah, he's riven above his awful home life. Or at least I thought he did. What do you mean, awful home life? The camera swivel. You're not sure how to word this. I should be diplomatic, I think. It's not our story to tell, it's Connor's story to tell. So diplomatic works. He has a complicated family life. His mum's always been cruel and his dad was totally absent. Fascinating. So you think he's emulated his father completely? I never said that. Ooh, Scott glowers at you. Unlike your silly debate tournaments, this man cannot be won. Let me know when you get tired of chasing something false. I'll be waiting. You get to your feet and meet the producer's eyes. I've had enough of this reward. I'd like to go back to the house now. Thank you. Begrudgingly, the producers agree with a nod. Anna and Ben turn off their cameras. They've got the precious drama they wanted. Finally, your plates are cleared and the car returns to take you and Scott back to the house. As soon as you enter the house, you see the lights are off in the main room. Hang on, are they playing on the TV? Is that like, is that other chapters on the TV? Like other stories on chapters? I think that's a really cool touch. I love that. I guess everyone's already asleep. We've had a pretty long day to be fair. You go to the kitchen to get water. As soon as you open the fridge, you hear the footsteps behind you. Oh, sorry, I was getting some water. Connor's face is illuminated by the open glow of the fridge. Your heart immediately begins to race. After all the memories the dinner dragged up, I don't know how to act around him anymore. I'm glad you're back though. I've been thinking all night about what I want to say to you. You close your eyes. Clearly you can't keep running away from this. Connor, what do you want to say? Connor takes a deep breath. Noelle, I can't stop thinking about you. Your heart almost stops right there in that kitchen. You don't have to say anything, but I just, I just needed you to know that. And I know there's so much history behind us, but I hope one day you can forgive me for, for what I've done. I should never have left you at that diner. I've regretted it since. You inhale sharply. I've waited so long to hear those words. You stare at the ground. Moonlight casts shadows on the kitchen floor. You look up. I know it won't be easy for things to go back to the way they were. I know that, Noelle. I have a lot of explaining to do first. Stuff I was never able to tell you. Stuff I was terrified to tell you. I should have said something anyways. I let everything freeze up because of it. Before you realize it, Connor's face is so close to yours. His eyes burn with sincerity. Our families, our stupid, stuck-up, stubborn families, all those expectations. His voice drifts off, his head bowed. When he looks up at you again, his eyes look haunted. I didn't expect you to just forget what I did. I know it doesn't work like that. You have every right to still be angry with me. But do you think you could ever forgive me? One day? Um, 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 that's such an evil, that's so evil. I kind of want the drama and say, I'm never going to forgive you, but I also know that's unfair. So, oh, I'll never forgive you. Hurt flashes across Connor's face. I just, Connor, I was so heartbroken back then. But that doesn't mean I'm not willing to try to forget. I have to survive with you this month after all. I really am here for you, Noelle. That's the only reason I'm doing this show. Really? It's just about me? What about the $1 million prize? There's a hint of accusation in your voice. Surprise flickers across Connor's face. Connor gives you a sad, mysterious smile. I actually need the money more than you might think. Let Connor keep his privacy. He'll tell us when he wants to. It's okay. You don't have to talk about it. No, it's fine. I want to. It's my mum. Mostly. Your body automatically tenses at the mention of his mum. She always treated you like a pawn who can make your own decisions. Connor's jaw tenses out of a reflex. She's stubborn, but her intentions are good. Are they? She could barely handle the idea that you had a mind and a heart of your own. The sadness on Connor's face suggests something is seriously wrong. Sorry, I shouldn't have brought her up. I know you and her don't see eye to eye. It's just she's now... Oh, never mind. Connor waves dismissively, though the troubled pain expression on his face remains. I don't want to bother you with all that. Connor... <gasps> oh, this game is so mean! That's so harsh. Especially because it's like, it's not really in me to just like, say... You're right, I don't care. Oh man, okay. You're right. I don't care. And if Connor still tries after this, then he, he is a real one. As much as I do care about you, your mum hurt me a lot, you know? Yeah, of course, I understand that. Before you can ask any more questions, Connor pulls away. Sorry, I shouldn't have kept you here so long. Anyway, good night, Noelle. What about your water? Uh, what? Connor looks confused. You said you came in here to get a glass of water? I think we both really know what I came in here for. Something jerks in your chest. The air shifts between you, filled with words unspoken. Good night, Noelle. 
Ooh. Connor goes to his room. You return to your bedroom, your head still spinning, your pulse still racing. After a lot of tossing and turning, you finally manage to fall asleep. You don't dream. Ooh, there's a lot of mud on the floor. Oh, is it? Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. The next day, you're all taken to a challenge site. Jeff's smiling face greets you. Good morning, challengers. That's when you see the giant mud pit in the center of the field. That's right, everyone. Today, you'll be mud wrestling. Daisy groans loudly. Seriously, Jeff, can't the challenge be something like, who can take the longest bubble bath? The rest of you laugh. Jeff grins at Daisy. Sorry, Daisy, I wish I had better news for you, but today you're gonna have to get dirty. Sounds fun. Can't wait to get dirty. You and Connor share a quick grin. In the center of the mud pit is a large ball, roughly the size of a volleyball. Today is a punishment challenge, which means whoever wins chooses someone to go to the shack. You resist the urge to rub your hands together giddily. Noelle, you look happy. Oh, I bet she's thrilled. Connor shoots you a flirtatious grin. And why is that, Connor? Because Noelle loves fighting for sport, and she doesn't mind getting a little dirty. The double meaning in his words doesn't escape you. You feel a little bloom of heat. Does that make you nervous to go against her, Connor? Not in the slightest. I can take her on. The confidence in his voice makes a thrill run down your spine. He winks at you. Noelle, do you think you can beat Connor? Me? Um, please, Connor doesn't stand a chance. He's got nothing on me. Oh, wow, starting the trash talk already, huh? You started it. All right, all right, save it for the pit, folks. Here's how this will go. You've been assigned random heats. Whoever wins their heat will then move on to the next round. Now you're more eager than ever to get into the pit. That familiar fire surges in your veins. Let's do this. First up, Noelle and Caroline. Ooh. You can't help the smile that flicks across your face. Good, I've always wanted the chance to throw Caroline in the mud. Oh, hell yeah, that's hot. Rike! You roll your eyes. Rike and Lauren high-five each other. Scott is openly leering. Connor, meanwhile, is stony-faced. No way, I'm not doing this. Why, are you afraid? No, I just... Whatever, I don't want to. She sputters. You narrow your eyes. Are you saying you refuse to do the challenge? You look at Jeff. Does this mean I automatically win? Well, I obviously want to earn my victory. I'll take it in any way I can. That depends. Jeff turns to Caroline. Caroline, if you refuse, you automatically get sent to the isolation shack. Caroline's eyes go wide in horror. Okay, okay, fine, I'll do it. You confidently enter the pit. Caroline wades into the mud, still looking terror-stricken and disgusted. When I blow my whistle, you will both attempt to catch the ball and get it in your opponent's basket. You see a basketball hoop on Caroline's side of the pit and nod. On my whistle, go. He blows his whistle and you immediately dive for the ball and tuck it under your arm. Caroline pitifully attempts to guard her hoop. I should... I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna push her into the mud and then shoot. Not very nice of me, but I don't care. You barrel towards Caroline and shove her into the mud. She cries out in disgust. Now that she's down, you take the opportunity to shoot. Let's go, Noelle! The ball cuts through the air and lands neatly in the hoop. Can't help but pump your fist in the air. You can hear Connor, Lily, and Daisy all cheering. Noelle wins this heat! You climb out of the mud pit and Caroline climbs out after you. Do a victory dance. I feel like that's the only way to do it fairly, you know? Hell yeah! You do a victory dance for the cameras. Everyone but Caroline laughs. You step into line beside Connor. He brushes his elbow against yours. Good job, Noel. You are fierce. The timbre of his voice is low and intimate. For you, not for the cameras. That was nothing. I'm ready for a tougher opponent. You give him a suggestive look. Connor winks. Next up is Daisy and Reich. You get a kick out of watching Daisy easily flirt her way to a win. She teases Reich and steals the ball away from him. He's so distracted by her, he doesn't even notice. That's not fair. Daisy blows Rike a cheeky kiss after she manages to dunk her ball into the hoop. Rike playfully scoops her up into his arms and carries her out of the mud pit. I kind of like Rike, you know. Next up is Lily and Lauren. Everyone's jaw drops when Lily manages to put Lauren in a headlock. Damn, Lil, who knew she had it in her? Lily scores. Even Lauren looks surprised. Where the hell did all that strength come from? Lily shrugs a little bashfully. Pent up sexual aggression? Lauren laughs alongside everyone else. Finally, Scott and Connor are up. You watch with bated breath as Connor and Scott size each other up in a standoff. Finally, Connor dives to the ball. Scott immediately jumps on his back. I should... I'm going to cheer for Connor. Why not? Get him, Connor! You've got this! Connor shoots you a quick grin before facing off against Scott with a fierce look in his eye. Then, Connor manages to cleverly sidestep Scott and take the shot. Your heart clenches with fear. He's still pretty far away from Scott's hoop, so it's a risky move. 
The ball shoots right into the basket. Yes! You cheer along with the others. Everyone is united in wanting to see Scott beaten. Plus, you can't deny how good it feels to watch Connor absolutely destroy another competitor. He emerges from the mud pit, streaked in dirt and sweat. Why does he look so sexy to me right now? He wipes the mud off his face with a careless gesture. He strides towards you confidently. Heat pulses low in your stomach. Before you know it, he's right in front of you. How's that, Noel? I think your congratulations are in order, don't you? There's a teasing lilt in his voice that makes your throat run dry. I'm gonna... Ah, oh, I'm gonna say nothing. I hate this. Okay, I need to spend some more gems. I, maybe the next part. You shrug and look away, trying to hide from his gaze. Maybe we just need more spicy gem options. I see how it is, Noel. I know deep down you're happy for me. You roll your eyes playfully. All right, now the winners of Heat 1 should step forward. You, Connor, Lily, Daisy all take a step. Now I will announce the matchups for Heat 2. Your heart slams against your ribcage. First up, Noel versus Connor. Ooh! What did we think of that? That was that was definitely a different episode. What did you think? Let me know down below. I definitely think Scott just wants to cause drama and I'm not loving it, but I also love the drama. Let me know what you think. Should we be a bit more open hearted to Scott and see if we can get to know him? Or do you think we should keep away? Because I'm, I'm kind of in both camps, but definitely more so after his behavior in that episode on the stay away side. Thank you so much for watching this episode, everyone. I hope you're doing well. As always, thank you so much to our amazing members who got to watch this video early and most videos before everyone else on the channel so thank you so 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 much for being a member i appreciate all of you so much thank you if you would like to sign up and be a member please feel free to click the join button or there's always a link in the description and if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already please do subscribe click the like button and turn on your notifications so you know every single time i upload a video thank you so much for watching i appreciate you so so much and i'll catch you in the next one